could have swore I had something before we start the stream, but I, I just cannot remember it now. It, well, it yeeted. If, if it comes up, if you remember. Well, hey, welcome back, though. This is, this is episode 20. This is episode 20 of our very successful, highly decorated... Tim Elden plays Show. Elden Ring for me. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> hey, you, you, you've, you've killed quite a few things after I've died. That's true. I, I get, like, the rebound. I, 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 mean, I, like, I get revenge for you. I let you do most That's of the work and then... Just fucking destroys that it does it does get pretty uh that's true that do, it does get pretty pretty high damage right I mean, when you can build it up enough i mean the trouble i have is with the like there's something like that like that bull thing we were fighting that's like crazy fast you know where it like it's almost you almost like don't have a chance to do the wind up sometimes that's that's the stuff i have the most trouble with All right, well, uh, where should I be fast traveling to? You should be fingering yourself right then and there. Oh, and the okay. The sign is right there. Well, all right, then. Uh, let's go to the item crafting and... Oh, that's right. We I told you um, we were going to start off... Uh, or or we, we figured out that we were going to do your abilities. Oh, yes. Get you magic enabled. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's true, that's true. Uh, that is that is very true. How many of these can I make? Nice, I can make another 60. Hell yeah. So, you're all, you're gonna also make the maximum amount of your spark aromatic? It's the three perfume bottles uh, icon, the orange one? Uh... uh... But there we go. The, uh, just the most I can. Uh, I can do three. Uh, yeah, do do all three of those. Okay. And then go over to your pots and okay. make as many fire or holy water pots as you want. Yeah, I forget what you've unlocked. I think you might just have fire. Yeah, right now I just so I'll just do the do, do twelve fire. All yeah. right. All right. Anything else I should be crafting right now? Um, do you have a crossbow of any sort? Hmm. Uh, I've got, a, I've got, a, uh, fire arrows. I've got a bunch of arrows all equipped and I would have done it, but, but no crossbow. Uh, let's see. Because if not, I, I do believe I have a crossbow I can give you. Because that would also go well uh, with the Belmont fantasy when you're stuck doing ranged. Okay, so I've got two. I've got uh, Soldier's Crossbow plus six, and I have Creepus's Black Key Crossbow. I don't, I don't, I don't like the sound of that guy, but um, you, is yours better? Oh, wait, is, what's the range number on both of them? Uh, where is that? Where is he? It's right under critical. All right, so technically Black Bow has better range, but you don't have it leveled up, so I'd just go with Soldier's Crossbow for now. All right, so that's in my slot there. And then let me put the fire pots in here. The fire and... pots will, yeah, they'll go on your uh, little quick task. And I would do the Spark Aromatic too. Yep, yep, so, okay, so I have those all set up there. Um... Throwing knives are also uh, another. Good oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forget. I thought I Just forget. Go. I stabbed some of this shit. <laughs> Where are you throwing knives? I know you've got it. I've got. I've got throwing daggers. I've got kukri. Got crystal darts. I've got poison bone darts. I've got a bunch of fucking stuff. I haven't been using it all. <laughs> Uh, it's 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 a that's really fun in this game because you can almost like in terms of the consumable shit you can usually craft more of it. Or right. There's multiple ways to come across either the items to craft it or it's 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 nice. You don't feel as compelled to not use your consumable items in in this one at least. Ooh, and I've got I've got poison ones too. 
Not a lot, but like fucking still, that's not cool. a lot, but just a little bit. Okay. Oh, and then yeah, there's your. Uh, do, should 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 we do we oh. do I summon you or do do we want to get all that magic stuff oh. set up first or does uh, that rest at your sight of grace and let's yes. look at what spells you have. All right. Uh, memorize spell. I have catch flame, flame sling, flame cleanse me, bestial sling, and poison mist. That's everything I uh, that doesn't have a red X on it that I have. All right. Well, that tells us two things. We need, need to go to, to Turtle Pope. Oh shit! Where's okay? Where's Turtle Pope? I'm go to Turtle Pope. Uh, that's Church of Vows in Liernia. Church of... I should call it Church of Turtle Pope. Yeah. The, the, the... Ooh, wrong one. There we go. Um, does Turtle Pope even have a name? His name's Turtle Pope. It's like Baby Yoda. Like, they can tell me his name, and I'm not going to stop calling him that. <laughs> All right. Turtle Pope. What's up? What's up? What's up, Pope Turtle? Turtle Pope, what's going on? Now, see, do you have any books you can give to Turtle Pope? Uh, give, I could give him the Fire Monk's prayer book, and I can give him the Godskin prayer book. Should I just give him both? Or does it even... Uh, yeah, just give him, give him all the... Just give him all the books. Alright. Heresy cool. not is, is not native to the world, but is a contrivance. I've always <laughs> enjoyed that about Turtle Pope. He he he's a he's got he's got stuff to say, man. He's really got he's really got stuff to tell you. You can also give him scrolls. Oh but, shit! Uh, Conspectus scroll and Royal House scroll. I mean, should I just do it? I mean, yeah, absolutely. Turtle Pope has a, is ridiculously hard to accidentally kill because of a high health pool and does nothing to aggravate you ever. Just good. Gives you lots of lore. Tells you about I love the Turtle convenient Pope. statue. Never, uh, there's like a statue to your right. If you piss any NPC off, you just go to that statue and give it some celestial dew, mm -hmm. uh, mountain dews, uh, bougie upgrade. Some celestial mountain dew. Yeah. <laughs> And then study incantations is what you're going to do next. All right. So we got Blessings Boon, O Flame, Surge O Flame, Black Flame, Black Flame Blade. Uh, so Surge O Flame is the... Able to get... Yeah, Surge O Flame, I think, it's... is the only one you'll be able to pick up right now. I mean, I can get... I can get some of the other ones. O I just might not be able to use them. But... Might also be a good one to have um because i, I could just upgrade to it later yeah so there's a ball of raging black fire and enchants right hand armament with black flame so your whips can be enchanted with magic because they currently don't have any equipped right now right so once you unlock that you can uh you can uh bathe them in black flame or lightning or frost or whatever um that's, let's let's that's just the take it then. miracles I mean, oh fuck it, I'll just buy all these Black Flame ones. Uh, the Black Flame is incredibly cool magic. It is the only magic which was able to kill gods before the Rune of Death was, like, before Death was taking out of the fabric of reality, that flame could kill demigods. That's badass. And so there's these guys, the, you, uh, the one at the top of the windmill village we were at, was yeah. wearing the skin of a demigod that he had just turned mm -hmm. into a suit. Damn, okay. They're called the Godskin Butchers. That's, that's pretty badass. And then I don't know how much you want to... Because I think Richter is to him the already. only... Um, or no, Richter is the only one I can think of that uses a whole ton of sorcery. I mean, I, I, now I just have to put some more points into Faith. Uh, yeah, faith I think is the best uh, one to stick with the miracles and the the flame and the holy. So, yeah, I mean I can throw. Right like what's your level up. next level? Oh, uh, I, I have one. 
Yeah, I could, I could do 15 then. So I need, I think, the O Flame is 16. And then I, by, by, I know, for, I know for sure looking at them by 20, I could do both of the Black Flame ones. Nice. I think 20 was, yeah. All right. Then we, I think, have done all of the magic that we can do. Oh, I guess get Surge O Flame, the flamethrower on there. Let's see. Surge O Flame. And I'm going to put the two black flame ones in here. I, oh, I can't even use them. Oh, no, it just lets me know. Yeah, I know I can't use them yet, but I'll just throw them in there, and then we'll, I'll, I'll put the points in there soon. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so now just fast travel back to where I was? Yeah, now we're going to go back to Windmill Village. All right. Fucking Windmill Village. You son of a bitch. Okay. And the fingering has commenced. Get ready to get fingered. Now, like if I go up to catch flame, it's still grayed out, uh, even though it's one I can use. So how does that work exactly? So then? for to do that, or to use faith spells, you have to have a miracle, or a, it's called a sacred seal equipped. So just go into your equipment and root around in there like a truffle pig uh, for right. something called a sacred seal. It would be around what? the staff bows area. Okay. And it could just be slotted in the, a weapon slot? Yeah. And then okay. you would, uh, to use that, you would just hit left on the D-pad, swap your weapon to the sacred seal, and that allows you to cast the magic. What is a cipher pata? That is a fist item that's just a spike made of pure, unblockable light. All right, Glenstone Staff. Got some, I got, I got, uh... Yeah, it would, okay, so you do have two seals. One of them you can use. Claw Mark Seal. Okay. And then if I... So, okay. So then... It did... And then What's what the button? strongest thing you have equipped right now? As like far as the weapons plus, go? Like plus five or plus seven, yeah. Uh, the, my uh, metal, uh, the pedal whip is plus eleven. The leather plus is plus 11. ten. Plus six for the crossbow, yeah. Alright, then in that case, we're going to do a little swap so that you don't have to worry about casting spells that are essentially first level because you haven't upgraded the seal. I'm uh, going to just give you an upgraded one and you'll give me your oh, okay. bitch one. Alright. <laughs> Fair enough. So I'll go in there and just drop that then. Uh... How do I... Wait, how do I drop that? Drop it. What is the what is the button to drop it? No, I'm not. I think you just uh, you click on it, like select it. Uh -huh. or I think you have to go from inventory. Oh, that makes sense. That's why but it's in there. Don't drop it till I'm in your game. Otherwise, you might. It, otherwise, might you won't actually see it. Ah. Freaking well, I freaking. fingered myself, but I don't see the sign. Oh, I'm getting the uh, claw mark seal. Ah, uh, nice right. and sealed for you. Gotta have that fresh sealed in flavor. Yeah, your fresh seal, <laughs> seal flavor. <laughs> Somewhere between a fish and a dog. Somewhere between a seal. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> mm. That's, no, um, that's the flavor profile we're looking at. All right. Somewhere between a fish and a duck. <laughs> uh, now, Tim, how are you feeling about the PlayStation Showcase? I think we saw some pretty great stuff, but I am for sure most stoked about the Alan Wake. That's for sure. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's my that's number one, too. Yeah. I mean, we it's just been so long. 
Like Spider Man looks great, but I've oh, we've only been waiting two years for for Spider Man. Like the Miles Morales came out in twenty twenty, like the end or yeah, yeah, twenty twenty. Um, so it's, I guess I guess three years, but still not that long. Metal Gear has it has been a long time for Metal Gear. To be fair, that's also been a really long time. But it's also a remake, and Alan Wake is like a legit like new game, like like a full sequel that is not, you know. Ooh, sweet. Oh, um, just as a quick demonstration, this is the jar cannon. Oh. Uh. Um. Let me just just this is just what the jar cannon does. Oh wow. It's like uh It's, it's a ballista. Like a, that's fucking awesome. It's function it fires ballista bolts. That's hilarious. Uh oh, what the fuck? Get the fuck out of here. I was just trying to be in my inventory. You bitches! Killing me will bring back your goddamn honey! <laughs> the fucking witches. You bitches! God, I love that movie. That, and, uh, I feel like I need to watch a movie of, or like a marathon of terrible movies, and that and The, the Room... Oh, those are those are two high quality, bad quality movies. What would what would your third? What would your be added movie to make that an effective trio? Ooh, oh man, I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of pretty funny ones out there. I think um, yeah. Okay, what what is the button to drop the thing? I still don't see that. So uh, from inventory, you just hit like X. Oh, it okay. Open. It opens up the right. Okay. Alright. Okay. Alright. Now. Alright, now let me let's equip this thing real quick. And we'll be good to go. So now I can now I, I can do I can do magic? Now you can do magic. If you want we can uh, practice on a couple villagers before we leave. Yeah, let's fucking do it just to just to just, just for the hell of it. Just for the hell of it. Oh, okay, wrong thing. All right, so it's like nice. Okay. Oop, longer wind up than I was expecting, but okay, that's fun. Okay. Ah. Okay. I got the poison mist. Okay, that's pretty fun. That's just like a flamethrower in your hand. All right, well. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I think that's all the ones that I Oh shit. can't use right now. I was playing around. All right, well, I also used all of my... Uh, my stuff, so. Okay, maybe maybe we rest. I feel maybe like that's I a good myself. idea. I think that's a I think that's a good, and then we can go f with the fresh, everything. <laughs> I forgot that it it it, it, it that that's... draws all of them. Okay. But that's the walk of life. Oh fuck it! The don't don't use that. Of life. The walk of fuck of flame life, man. Alright. And now we will actually do the next thing. No, I suppose it, it is up to you. Would you. Do we want to. Uh, I never asked you where you wanted to go. We couldn't. We can go to the Shady Castle. I mean, or... you, you, you got. You, you're the one that knows what's going on, so. I feel like I should be having you do more. I almost feel bad that I'm playing the game for you. 
No, 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 no. This was this is what I this is what I wanted. This is what I asked for. (laughs) Is this now? Well, that's this is how we've done all the Souls games so far. Uh, this, is, this is not different. It's no no different now. Uh, Sek- Sekiro, I just I, I had to I had to do everything myself. Even then, you still like looked up how to get like the best ending and stuff. So we we did like all of like all like got like the I, true ending on the first try. It does. I, that has been my pretty consistent role. I guess with uh, well, like with Wolong, we'll be discovering more of that kind of fresh, like yeah, at the same that, time. I that is a game I will play no farther ahead in any capacity. Uh, y- we will. Make will it basically be? You, and then and you'll just catch up after. Yep. Nice. Yeah, no, no, that's going to be fun. It's going to be super fun. Oh, yeah. Tim, do you think we've hit the 50% yet? No, probably not. Uh, not quite. But I can't imagine. I, th- I think I think we're, we're closing in on it. Okay. After we finish all this plateau, how, how much of the game do you think we would be, like, through? Because those are the three biggest areas all finished. Uh, once we are finished with Volcano Man, either the the Royal Capital or Volcano Manor, mm-hmm. uh, we will be at the fifty percent mark. Because uh, afterwards, we have like half of Altus Plateau. I think would take us there. Because then we have Kalid, the other half of Leyendel, all of Mountain Top of Giants, and it's fifty thousand sub zones. <laughs> right. All these goddamn windmills look alike to me. Hey, that's racist. That's offensive to windmills, I know. <laughs> no, windmills suck. I don't care. Oakdale agrees with you. That is why they are banned, even ornamental ones. I mean, I don't think they need to be banned, but they're just not nearly oh, as yeah. effective as people like to think they are. Wind energy it's... is kind of garbage. It's Solar is much better than wind. Wind requires a lot of it, it's it's supplemental at best. Well, I mean, bo- and both solar and wind also require you to do a lot of shit. That's like like the like the, to create the windmill, like a, like the big gigantic ones, right? Like the, the ones that are supposed to be like you know oh, we're powering all the stuff just off of the windmill. To actually make the windmills that are that big, you have to put so much carbon in the air to create the damn thing in the first place and you, the return on investment is just not big enough it's just it's just not big enough to be worth it solar can solar absolutely can be but uh wind is just and the, the uh, ridiculous wind sucks. how like how fast uh like solar cell efficiency has improved in the last decade alone oh yeah it's not gotten way mention, better like, I got a bunch like of nobles. Solar in the '90s, it was like, it was there, but it was like as clunky as cell phone tech. And now you can power a lot with a, the the cells you can fit on top of like a shed. Yeah, yeah, no. So I, I, I genuinely really like solar. I people need to let the wind go, though. That's not happening. <laughs> it's not. That's not. It's never going to be like you could spend all the time in the world trying to make it real good. It's just, it's not. It's never going to be there. There should have been a couple items you picked up over there. Yeah, I got I got the like whole noble outfit and, and all swords. that stuff. Yeah, but that's that's not where the cool fun stuff is. Oh well, I want to see the cool fun stuff. I also, you know, I also say, like, for as much as if you, you might, you feel bad that you're do, you feel like you're doing so much of this, like, and I'm not playing as much of it for myself. But some of some of that's also just like that's the only way we're gonna finish this in any reasonable amount of time. That is true. Because how we've already like when did we? Ooh, got a whole bunch of mage stuff there. Nice. 
Yeah, Sweet. you got the entire battle mage regalia of uh, Fuck yeah. the dude that made the... That's That was Haima right there. That was one of the great sorcerers that invented war magic. Damn. Okay. Well, he's he, he, he kind of went down like a bitch. Yeah, he did. It was kind of funny. <laughs> um, and also, like, I mean, I know how I get when... Oh, big rat. I know how I get when it's like something that I'm just like absolutely in love with and I'll take an excuse to just talk about the lore of something. And I can only assume that this is a great outlet for you to just be able to talk about Souls games and all of the story that you would like really want to get out anyway. That is true. Uh, you were talking about a big rat earlier, right? Oh, I just killed it. I mean, oh, there might did be. A... You? Yeah. Did you kill this one? Is there the same rat. size? Wait, really? Does it have a? Oh, I killed oh, a... it. It was the. Oh. it was the same size. The one I just took out. Damn, there are lots of big rats around here. It's a lot of big rats, man. God damn it! Hmm. Big old rat. Careful. Oh, what's the ah? Is that a... Oh, is that an invasion? When did that happen? I didn't even notice that. Did we get an invasion message? Yeah, we did. How did the fuck I not see that? Ah, oh, don't you fucking heal, you bitch. was dead. Likes to think he's a fucking... Oh, I just noticed your name said Hothead. <laughs> I, I just caught that. Not quite, not quite. The shit out of me. Not quite, you're not dead yet. Ooh. God damn it, how many fucking healing items do you have? Probably ten. Is that, it's actually, is, is that the, is that the max? Uh, it's like 13. Oh, okay. So he could have up to 13. Oh, oh, he's got to keep dodging to, oh, he's, to, if he stops to heal, we can get him. Oh, a fucking squirrel got in the way. Ah. Uh, okay, that 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 the the, the got him. has worn off. Got him. Okay, I was gonna pull out bubble weapon, and then he was gonna be fucked. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have that as the backup, though. But I I managed to. I can't catch yeah. up with them. See, see right there, uh, we would have been destroyed. I'm just a pothead after all. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying I don't do any of the work here, but I, I think we know who's pulling the lion's share. The lion's share. Yeah. I we I have killed several lions in this game, so... You just um, haven't been to Kaled yet. Lots of lions in Kaled, obviously. That's where they, that's where they go. Uh, well, I also, like, 
I was also going to say, like, I, I don't feel bad about cheesing anything in the up, in the rest of these games because I I did Sekiro. You did Sekiro, yeah. I did Sekiro, did Sekiro. by myself, and I that's that was I thought the hardest of all of them, hands down. So, like, yeah, I don't I don't feel bad about cheesing anything uh, after like actually beating Sekiro. Not at all. You've put in your... You've, you've done your... Page your sentence. I mean, I've also beaten Cuphead, which... Didn't you get, like, which frustrated and not. give up on? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've beaten my yeah. hard games. Like, I have. I mean, I think I can, I can do these Souls games given enough time. I just find the... It is Tim, a time investment. It's a time investment. Not that I, like, have a problem with that necessarily... But, like, this is more fun. <laughs> and that's the thing about these games. Ultimately, it's about having fun. There is no wrong way to do them, as long as you're experiencing the game. I mean, I, I, I'm a glutton for punishment for certain stuff. Like, I did, like, like again, Sekiro, I did, I, I did kind of, I did do that. Cuphead, I slammed my head into the wall. That is Cuphead, until I fucking conquered it. Man, it's been a while since I've been able to get Adam around. Have oh, yeah. Cause we, cause, cause I, uh, I had him co-hosting Cuphead streams, but uh, we got we got to the aisle too, and I can't remember how far we got. But then, yeah, it's it's been a while. Touch greatness. All right, hell yeah. There's another thing around here somewhere. I can sometimes remember the Scarab Beetles because I'm like uh, autistic or whatever. But Tim, Tim, there's no one that streams on this channel that isn't like that's like a brand yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. This is like we should have a little fucking whistle. It's like oop, special interest, <laughs> special interest topic. <laughs> I mean, the, the fucking asides that me, Alex, and Ulysses will get into on some of these streams. I mean, you've been here for some of those, even. Like, the conversations, that we, the things that we end up hyper-focusing on. I mean, we probably had a 45-minute conversation about how centaur genitalia works at one point. But have you had the conversation about whether or not uh, Smurfs lay eggs? Uh, I actually think that's come up. Actually, do you think that has come up? Well, yeah. Which did you land on? Well, they have. Well, there's only. I. I mean, did, I don't know that they reproduce at all. I think they're probably more like Varl from Banner Saga. They're they're just like they just got created, and because there's no women. The only woman is like a is like a invader from the outside, having been like manufactured by a sorcerer to like get in with the with the Smurfs. So, like realistically, logically thinking, I think that they just I think they were like crafted and are not actually capable of reproduction. Ah, so like there's some form of homunculi or some simulacrum. There. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. That's 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 that's, that's where that's my stance on the Smurfs. See, we gotta further that discussion at every possible point. <laughs> That's my take, at least. I we'll have to bring it up on uh, Tuesday and see what Alex and Ulysses say. Um, I like uh, we were when one of the one of the Death Loop episodes. I got like really stupidly stuck in like a small building at one point, and we I, like I, it was like twenty minutes that I we just started talking about like fucking people's dads because we couldn't figure out where to go. So and that that like really took over the conversation for a while. <laughs> I mean, we 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 just yeah. I mean, something comes up and we just don't let it go. Well, yeah, especially when <laughs> when it's when it's that. <laughs> when it's dead fucking I mean we just you know hi what's going on with you you got a little is that a mask or oh yeah that's a mask got a face under there and you're probably wondering something like Tim can you get the mask 
I would think you could. Dragon wound grease. Oh, there you go. Do you have to have the mask on to talk to him? Is that the... Oh, no. He just doesn't talk. He's a nonverbal character. Oh, okay. Well, Tim, uh, what have you... Well, have you have, have you been checking anything new out this week? Watch anything new? Check out any of the animes that I've sent or sent your way? I went to or, see, or played uh, anything or uh, so Joe Hisaishi, uh, who does the Studio Ghibli movies among other things. Oh yes, yes, yes! I think you I mentioned you were going to go that. do that. It was a string quartet uh, rendition of like a bunch of his work. And that was that's really awesome fun to see. That's sounds very cool. Because the, the the leader of the quartet had actually gotten to work with him back when, uh, like, he was doing some of his earlier work. Oh, okay. So like, it was somebody familiar with the actual stuff. Um, so that's that was awesome. really fun. Yeah, that sounds very cool. Uh, I have also started a, a show called Link Click that I'd had recommended to me like forever okay. ago, and I'd just been kind of. I can't say I've heard of that one. It came out last year, and it's a like a Chinese anime. Okay. And pretty recent then. Yeah, and I think a, like Crunchyroll did the, like the funding or the production or something like that. So it's it, it it's only form of promotion was Crunchyroll. But the whole okay. thing is like um, these two guys have the ability to time travel back to pictures. Like they can time travel back through photographs into the person who took the photograph and they have 12 hours hmm. to um, be in the past and they use it to like for espionage huh. or like uh, uh, could you find this recipe that like my uh, my cooking partner is withholding from me can you find like uh, like uh, the corporate tax records that prove this company is doing fraud huh okay uh, the most recent episode was uh, go back in time and correct some of my biggest uh, like like I had the worst day of my life. Go back and tell these people something, and so they're technically <laughs> changing the past. But like the whole uh, thing is like trying to figure it, like the whole thing's a fucking mystery. And uh, the animation okay. is relatively like it's it's different. It's hand drawn. Um, so it has a nice kind of personality to it. Ow. But I'm not tremendous. I'm like finished with like the third episode, so. You're so like, you like it, but you're not in love with it. So I would I, I, So far, like, I know I'm going to watch the rest of it. I just okay. can't say for sure, like, if I, like, if the series is uh, for sure, because it might just end up being crap. Sure. Well, I mean, but like, some can, on lots story. of things start good, and then, like, the payoff doesn't feel like it, it, like, it doesn't always go somewhere by the end, you know? Like, some, exactly. sometimes something starts out cool, and then it kind of, as it goes on, like, it just kind of... The premise I'm sold on so far, because, like, at the end of the first episode, you find out that something was changed, and it foreshadows, like, like, relatively big implications for even the smallest of impacts and then okay like uh each each time they go into the past they they're accidentally changing shit and hmm. it's it's so far been hinted shit. at that that is gonna kind of like butterfly effect into something potentially maybe good but most I, I, I like the concept for sure um yeah hopefully hopefully it like it, it it knows it has a good place to go with it i mean i i'll I'll say time travel is like some of the hardest that's some of the hardest shit to write I mean time travel like, rules can get out of control very easily yeah like uh, especially because it's not like professionals doing it like it's one guy who has the ability to see the past and stuff and manipulate and one person who has the ability to jump back in time into a person hmm, neither of right. them can use their abilities without each other though for whatever reason, like with any degree of accuracy, it's like a two-person job to successfully go back in time and not fuck it up. This is just a comic book. It's a, it, there's no a, animation of it. Um, 
Have you ever heard of the... It's an American comic, uh, an indie one, too, not from, like, Marvel or DC or anything like that, but uh, it's just called Sex Crimes. You ever heard of this? I have not heard of it. So it is... It is... uh, I've never read much of it. I just know, like, how it starts. But this guy... Or maybe it starts with the girl. Either way, it starts. There's 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 two main characters, and they both have like the same power. When they have sex, it freezes time, and then they like run into each other, and they just like start robbing banks. <laughs> and I don't know where it goes beyond that basic initial premise, but I I think the whole, the, the basic concept is very funny to me. So. I did. Uh, that 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 does sound pretty cool. I feel like I've heard vaguely. I bet, something, I bet but, when but, it first came out, you probably heard people at least vaguely talking about it. Because I know is the people. It was one of those where like people were like, oh my god, have you heard about this? Like quite frequently. So I would be surprised if you didn't hear like something. Well, probably just the premise, the way I just described it, um, and probably not much more than that. Oh, there it ah, is. Ah, fuck. I saw the message at least that time, so it wasn't like a surprise. I'm gonna get you, get you, get you, get you one way or another. I'm dead. Oh, that was a poor weapon choice. Well, it's gonna, he's gonna get me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's gonna get you. So far, this jar build is not... Unless I kill myself I first! Ha-ha! Oh. Not dead yet. Well. <laughs> I didn't even kill myself successfully. Alright, well, I'm gonna keep jumping off things until I do. Damn it, that's not enough to kill me either. Alright, well, we're just gonna see what I run into, I guess. It's going on a jog. Ooh, poison shit, like immediately. So those two ogres, those two giants, were supposed right, to be well, chained to a cart that they were pulling around. For some reason, when we got to it, that cart had completely despawned. Oh, was that why? Yeah, that's why those two things were free to run around and just fucking kill the shit out of us. Hmm. Alright, well... Is back to the road of iniquity. Snap back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Oh, mom, spaghetti's dope. Magic. Uh, yeah, now we're at the road of iniquity, because that's this is where you go when, like, you've been laid off your job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh well. Like I said, we have, we mostly kicked most invasions back pretty good uh, in this it's, in this playthrough. So I mean, and it does we can't win them all. Depend a little bit on whether or not like I have a a build equipped that's more for fun or more effective. Sometimes it's both. Like sure. the death build I did that was really effective. Oh yeah, that kicked fucking ass, dude. Uh, the Jesus build was also surprisingly effective. <laughs> that was good. That was good. 
Einstein was kind of it, it, it had its merits, but it was more yeah. funny than anything. Yeah, same with like the Richter Belmont Richter. But I, I like I, I did have the whips though. The whips are. Fun. I mean, I, yeah, I love the whips. That's been uh, absolutely phenomenal. But as of now, I'm just keeping this little uh, in the back pocket. Because, uh, god damn it, do scythes, scythes are another fun one. No, scythes are great. Especially for how impractical they are in actual combat. Yeah, no, in real life, like, I would not ever suggest using a scythe for anything, really, but... In, a, in, a, in a, like, a fantasy setting? Phew, fucking awesome. Now, because oh, we yeah. killed all of these... Yeah. <laughs> Got one coming at you from the side here. Nice. God, that thing just really wipes these motherfuckers out. I got the thing from the back without even killing him. These don't even give good wounds either. That's the sad part. Yeah, right? Like, make them all hard to kill and then... Now see those big great shields, that cipher pata, that uh, that would go right through them. Mm. That 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 is the fun part about that because like you can just fucking stab things that have shields. Like I do need do to go damage. get my souls back because I dropped a bunch of. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna just run straight for those. And then we'll, we'll just find my way back up. Didn't even run into any enemies, really, trying to run away. There, I just just got chased down by that guy. Oh, and this is where all those, those dudes with the weird tentacle faces are. The worm faces? Yeah, worm face McGee. Alright. Now, we can do I a tower him. over here, actually, since we're down here. I suppose we might as a, well. A world boss down here eventually that's uh, a fancy one of these guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the next. I think the next big. What's the, what's what's the next like new release that you're looking, you're probably you're thinking you're gonna pick up. The next. Like big like the release. next like the next thing that you're like, oh, I want that enough to buy it on like a day one, and not even like not even like wait a little bit first, but like actually get it on like the day the first day. Ooh. I mean, Alan Wake Two is October seventeenth, and that's that. That that's I a mean, sure pick up for me. Yeah, that is that is that the very next one. See, I you don't know the release calendar as well as yes. I obsessively <laughs> have memorized it. <laughs> um, Mortal Kombat is September nineteenth. That is for sure a day one for me. Um. And then uh, the Bomb Rush Cyberfunk, the Jet Set Radio like spiritual successor, is coming out in August. I forget the exact date, but uh, that's a day one pick. I, well, I guess that one is one I... Maybe it's not a day one, because I do kind of want to see some reviews. But 
like as long as the reviews are at least decent, like decently positive, it's a day one. All right, we're looking for an illusory rock. Um, oh. I'm also looking exactly where it is simultaneously at that yeah i'm looking up exactly where it is but apparently oh there's a bunch of signs around this rock and it's ah, low i wonder if that could be it <laughs> the fuck is um, this diablo 4 i'm tentative uh but i might also like it because it might be good might be pure garbage uh, and that's what I'm going to wait for the reviews on. Uh, God, yeah, I just so don't trust Blizzard. Well, like, I also, uh, you know, I am somewhat cautiously optimistic about that um, uh, new Assassin's Creed that's, like, going back to the old-school formula, and it's 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 a much shorter game, taking all those RPG elements out, go back to, like, what Assassin's Creed kind of started as. Um, and it's also way fucking shorter, like a hundred hours shorter. <laughs> um, and it's a bad dad. It's like kind of remind is more reminiscent of like Prince of Persia almost. So like, I would, I hope that's good. And if it, if it turns out really good, I can see my, I can see that being like a kind of a day one buy, but like, man, I don't trust Ubisoft. And no matter how promising it seems, I feel like I have to still be like, like, I, I have to wait and hear things about it first. Yeah. Good job. I uh, just do oh. not trust Ubisoft. Baldur's Gate 3. That is August 31st. Oh, nice. Okay, uh, so that's coming up. Day real. Yeah, absolutely. That's a PC only, or is that on consoles that is, now? I figure uh, PC that only, is right? PlayStation 5 and PC. Oh really? Okay, I kind of—I feel I, thought, I was gonna think that that maybe was too complicated to work on those consoles. Oh no, the um, so the the developer had previously done Divinity, uh, Original Sin one and two, which okay. has a lot of. It was the proof of concept for the whole style that they were right. for with a D and D game. Is that on consoles? I, that Divinity is on Original Sin. Oh okay. For some reason, I thought that was a PC only thing too, but it does seem like it. It would be the kind of genre. Looking at like... it, yeah. Hey, that one was just like minding his own business. Yeah, he was just praying. Yeah. Uh, at at a gravestone, I feel a little mean. Hey, you should. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Armored Core 6 also comes out on the 25th. I'm interested yeah. in that. Now, that is a fully single-player game, man. Yeah? I think, right? There's no multiplayer I, yes, going on with I that one. I believe so. That, that that's one another one that I absolutely want us to do on Rapid Respawn, but it it's not going to be right away. So that will that could be another one where like maybe you you've played it all, like the Banner Saga. Uh, you've played it all already um, when we get into it, but on the on the show. But uh, maybe you could you'll, you'll be able to give me some tips getting into it. Oh, for sure. Because I don't. Because yeah, it's gonna be a while until we're just just until we're done with this. I I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. Right. I don't. I I have to imagine that won't take as long, but. No. Yeah, I think that'll be a much more reasonably sized unseen, huh? Slumbering egg. That doesn't sound ominous so at all. One of those is partial invisibility that reduces your visible range. Huh. Um, which uh, is excellent for trying to like sneak around an environment because uh, NPCs don't like see you from in front as easy. Do you, you, do you also with, see? Like, do you see this guy? Sitting on nothing. <laughs> yeah, he's in a chair for me. Oh, is he? Oh, I rolled through and destroyed the chair. And so on my on the stream, the chair's just not there. He's just kind of sitting in, on nothing. No, not their chair. It's, it's a not their chair, Ben. Whoa. 
Gotta get your hair done in the not there chair. Now, this is where... That this is part of the reason we did the tower is because it's a little bit easier to uh, just yeet yourself. Oh, I guess there was one thing we could have gotten. A couple. Okay, like five things. Whatever. Anything crucial to my Belmont thing, though. Uh, golden seed. Uh, Ooh, oh book yeah. Book that gives you that healing warming stone that I uh, do. That's down here. Or over in this uh, area? That's that's kind of by the big tree next to the worm face boss. Oh, but so, I mean, we'll be coming back no matter what to do yeah, that boss we'll too, so. Exactly. That's why I'm not going to... Worry about it too much. So then should exactly. I be tra fast traveling then somewhere? Next, yes. You are going to go back to Path of Iniquity. All right. Road of Iniquity side path, or... Yes. Okay. Oh, and you, now that you know, talked to Gold Mask, that was who Brother Corrin was work, uh, looking for. So oh. when you see Brother Corrin next, tell him about it, and he'll move to that bridge next to Gold Mask. Okay. Oh, I've got something that should really make you feel old, by the way. Go for it. Pokemon cards have officially been featured on Antique Roadshow. <laughs> Pokemon cards on Antique Roadshow. Like, like, really, like, old, so old and worth a lot of money Pokemon cards have been on Antique, on the Antique Roadshow, like, PBS program. Huh. Because those are now, the first generation of that is now enough decades old that it actually can be considered an Antique to have, like, the old like, original prints and stuff of them. Jesus Christ. Am I old now? I mean... Or was I always? Some of us always were. Alex in particular. That guy is already an old dude. That's why he fears the gnomes. He remembers when they were still not stone. Well, dude, I mean, gnomes, it's it's not... The thing is, the gnome shit is, like, an international problem, too. Like, uh, Horton, Horton sent me pictures because he's heard us complain about... Or Alex, at least, complain about gnomes so many times. He, he, he went to the local store where he lives in England and... Took a bunch of pictures of the gnomes that are in his like fucking local hardware store, <laughs> and Sky has confirmed that there are. It's not as bad, and they're not. There's not as many, but they are in China. Like there are a bunch of gnomes for some reason all over stores in China. Although again, again, it's not as bad yet over there, but it probably will be. I think no. it's. I think it's a real sign of cultural decay. That, that That is unnerving. Well, okay, let me make the argument for you. I think it's genuinely a sign of cultural decay because you see them fill... Oh, there's that mask, cool. Uh, you see them filling up, like gnomes filling up so much of like the just random kind of bullshit, like tchotchke stuff, right? That's just around, like, just... Yeah. And... and and I think that the reason that you're seeing so much of it is because they're so cheap to produce that they're, it's replacing other kinds of ornaments and statues and sculptures because gnomes are so cheap to make that they could just print like a million fucking gnomes with the same mold and then just paint them differently. And I, 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 I really, I, oh, there we go. Sweet. I really think that that like it is actually the side of like corporatocracy uh, that there are so many gnomes around because it, it, it like it is a side of the conglomeration of products and manufacturing across the globe and so gnomes gnomes are a side of cultural decay <laughs> is my is my argument <laughs>
don't know. I, I think I think that honestly, I think that's I think that's why I think that's why you see so many gnomes now. And, uh, oh. and that's that's Alex's I think uh, line of thought originally. That kind of, but it makes a lot of fucking sense. These are the slugs that are turning the things into worm faces. I think because they are oh. the slugs. Are they worm also, faces or are they slug faces? Oh yeah, that is a that is a big question there. Have you? I got the cook. A, uh, cook you got the yes. Cook. There we go. Yes, I All did. Right. We can leave this. And I got the uh, golden seed too. Yeah, those golden seeds are it. Just having them scattered around as little saplings of the earth tree. Apparently, the lore behind those, they're little illusory trees uh, <laughs> that were sent out by the earth tree when the earth tree's golden age ended. As kind of like uh, the end of its production cycle. So you're almost given the idea that the uh, huh. the earth tree as a symbiotic, or as a parasitic kind of thing, like where it takes over the world tree. Like, Parasite huh. latches onto Yggdrasil, uses it to produce this golden age. The golden age ends. And then it's like, alright, time to send out a bunch of babies. And then have the babies do the same thing. Well, when the world ends, trees start having babies. <laughs> yeah. That is the vibe it's given off. Ooh. No, really no, ran up. Dead. Same time you get invaded too. Oh shit! Ah, oh, come on. Uh, there should be something in these ruins. I feel like uh. Something Wait, worth shouldn't they be like? For. Oh. Well, I can't get away from the fucking guy. Yeah, okay. Well, now we gotta go go back there anyway for to get the goddamn souls. Ah. At least to that one, the closest one is actually gonna be Windmill Village. Oh, is it? Right. Or actually, because that one was Woodfolk Ruins, that would be Bower of Bounty. Alright. Let's go down there. Yeah, I do I do really hope to someday be able to do these streams just a little more frequently just because well i mean elden ring is one thing since so long but like just in general like this is just such a fun time oh and deedly deedly hi diddly ho neighbor hi diddly do there neighborino <laughs> oh man Now I'm gonna follow you to our uh, your rooms. You've got the I've got the, the rune... little waypoint, yeah. Yeah, the rune dar. Rune dar. And these guys, we should be able to just outrun them. That's the thing about these uh, lumbering eldritch monstrosities is they're pretty fucking slow. There oh, there's got to be something to make up for how like weird looking they are. No, oh, Tim, you know what? I I've, I've been streaming it actually the last two nights in a row. I think only probably one more night I'll and I'll finish it. But uh, I've been playing Metro 2033. Have you ever played that? Do you know of it? I have about it. I know of it. About it. Have not played it. How are you enjoying it? I think it's fucking awesome. Um, it's like a, this is the 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 first one in the series that I'm playing. It was a PS3 game originally, um, 
I'm, the version I'm playing is like a remaster for the PS4. Um, it's awesome, though. It's, it's it, you know, post-apocalyptic fiction can get very tired and samey. Um, and it, but this does a really great job at feeling unique with cool art design, good monster design. It's kind of kicking both Doom 3 and Fallout's ass at the same time uh, to me. And uh, it's good, but it's also, it's like, it's got such a core focus on storytelling and like its actual like character. Um, and it's like world building and stuff. And because it, it's, it's based on a series of novels, which is like one of the biggest like international kind of pop culture things that like Russian culture has ever really had um on the rest of the world and so it's actually kind of funny because i was i was just thinking it's like what witcher is for like poland like polish fiction right polish fantasy this these metro games almost kind of feel like a similar thing um and the, the the actual novels are uh, this like Russian series of novels, and then the games are developed. I forget the name of the studio, but it's this Ukrainian um, game company. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's really good. I mean, like, and also just like it really well polished and like like well like put together and and very finished feeling. Uh, just especially just considering it's like a small team and like there's a lot of cool Eastern European games out there, especially on like PC. But a lot of the time they are janky, like lovably janky, but janky. And this doesn't really feel like janky in any way. It's kind of it kind of just feels. I don't know. It, it feels like it feels like it would have come out of like more of a triple A company. Um, it's just yeah, it's just very very good. I uh, well put together. I think uh, I'm really looking forward to playing the. There's three of them, and I think there's a fourth one in development. Uh, but yeah, highly recommend. Oh, well. I am back at uh, which one? Iniquity. Ah, okay. I also managed to, um, I, I've already told this uh, to you, but uh, the other thing I did this week was finish Chainsaw Man, or at least get Oh, yes, the it. manga. Yeah, fucking wild ride, man, right? Like, I guess uh, yeah, we won't get spoilery with it, but, like, fuck. <laughs> the way that, like, some of the, like, so, like, stuff that is set up already in season one, just the culmination of, like, uh, of where, where things go, um, yeah, I, I'm a I'm a I'm a big fan. Uh, it's it's my favorite like anime manga in a while. Like it is it is my. I think that is like I wouldn't put it. I mean, I wouldn't put like almost anything on that same level as Attack on Titan. Um, but well, I mean, I, there are a couple things I'd put up there. Uh, but but this is but it's like one of the next best ones I've seen in the last decade since Attack on Titan started. Like, it's definitely, like, one of the... one of my next favorites after that. Oh, for sure. Like, I, it's... The status quo... Uh, like... God, basically everyone... is just... able to die. Or be brought back. But mostly die. At any point. Yeah, it's not it's not a series with like a lot of safe like oh they're for, oh you know these are no these characters on. are all safe and you know you can kind of reliably say this this whole cast will just be continue to be around. Yeah, it's not so much of a thing there um, without being specific, but yeah, definitely like you know definitely a lot of room for things to for shit to go sideways. Excuse me. I guess. <laughs> uh, um, Jujutsu Kaisen also has like uh, it, it just reached the kind of like uh, like Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm dead. Really? Yep. Uh, bleed dog. 
chain bled me with uh, these little spike monsters. The ones that don't die. Oh, they don't die? Well, I mean, they, they, they do die, but god damn, they have like 95% uh, resistance to physical damage or some shit. 90, 80. Wow. Um, just stay there and I'll, uh, and don't die, obviously. You'll make your way around. I'll make my way and put it down at the top of those stairs going into that ominous cellar. Past where they are, you mean? Or... Oh yeah, past where they are. I guess, uh, or you could just go back to the beginning of the rooms. I'll put my sign down on the ground. They're also slowly following me out here, so I'm thinking I might be able to get them out of the entrance so I have room to get past them. Well, Tim, uh, theory, theories at all, Alan, Alan Wake's theories for what, what any of the stuff going on in, in that we've seen now for the second game? Like, do we have any you know, guesses about what's... I'm guessing, hopefully, we'll see Alan freed from his fucking lake. Alan Wake from his goddamn lake. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, like, cause that's the thing is, like, is that... Is that him at the end of the trailer when she, when uh, I don't know how much you um, if you read much of the like the press statement that uh, Remedy made about the trailer and the release date and stuff about the game, but the the woman that we also appear to be playing as is named Saga Anderson. Saga Anderson. Now Saga obviously being a literary term. Um, is very obviously tied into the writer aspect of the story with Alan Wake. But Anderson is the last name of the old rocker guys. Uh, and yeah, I don't, is. I, so I, I mean, that's definitely not a coincidence. Like that's, that's absolutely got meaning to it um, in some capacity. Um, her partner, right? I don't, you caught who that was, right? The other, the I, guy, the male FBI agent with her. Yeah, that was uh, that was um, the Max Payne, uh, the Alex Casey, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it, the the alt universe uh, version or whatever of of Max Payne. Because um, not only is that the same voice of that that voiced Max Payne, James McCaffrey, um, that's also the right the, the the face model. That's also Sam Lake, the head writer of Remedy, who's written all these games, who was also the face model of Max Payne in the original Max Payne game way back in the day. Did I summon you, or like what? Oh, I died again. Uh, oh. But this time I'm alive and my sign is down just for <laughs> Alright. Um, so yeah, so... So yeah, Alex Casey is is Alan's fictional alternate universe uh, parallel to Max Payne, is a full on character with the same voice and face and, and everything as Max Payne. Um, apparently, now we also have this a small detail that's in the trailer. Agent Robert Nightingale, right? He's the FBI agent chasing you around in the first game. And we uh, we see him get taken by the darkness in uh, the jail cell in chapter five of the original Alan Wake, and he just kind of gets grabbed by the darkness, and that's it. You, you see at, at the end of the game, like during all like the ending cutscenes, you see like people celebrating the like deer fest or whatever, and uh, you see um, you totally see uh, Night Nightingale. Um, like, like you see, like a shadowy version of him in like like a window, like kind of watching the celebration. So like he clearly wasn't he, like was like not a hundred percent dead, but there the the murder that the uh, that uh, Alex Casey and Saga Anderson are investigating is it's the murder of Agent Night Robert Nightingale. So I'm wondering if is that a because he went missing and it was a cold case back then, or was Alan keeping him alive and only recently like put his like like put right only recently allowed nightingale to finally die as part of his new story which could be kind of morbid and, and fucked up of alan to do 
Because we already know with how he's with with the way that everything ties into like control that like Alan might not be like the greatest person um, anymore to be able to free himself. Uh, he might. He, there's some other other messed up stuff and uh, the people he may have killed uh, already going on in that game. So he like we like he might have been like forcefully keeping this dude alive ever since that the first game. Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens, I guess. But that's uh, it's an interesting, interesting, interesting idea set up to see. Yeah. Well, and then also, um, you clearly there we're playing as that other character too. We're playing as Saga. Um. Now that's interesting. It, it appears to be now. So oh, and it actually at the top of the stairs again. Oh, sure. Um, what's interesting about this is that in the the original Alan Wake went through a troubled development, right? And the there was a lot of stuff they, that, was, that did not make it into the final version of that game. And one thing that was going to be part of, of that original game that, that didn't make it in was that y- you were going to play part of the game as Alan Wake and you were going to play part of the game as FBI agent Robert Nightingale track trying to chase alan wake so that was supposed to be part of the original game at one point and it just it just they weren't able to make it work so that's another that's that's very much a thing they're reusing from way back then um and and it's not just going to be like back and forth apparently there's going to be kind of an like a like a base sequence that we start with and then you're, there's going to just be two separate campaigns. Like you, you'll like I don't know if it'll be like you go, you could go do two, one chapter of one, and then you could do one chapter of the other, and then go back and forth. Or if you kind of have to do like you, you go into one, you play that one, and then you end it, and then you go play the other. I don't know if exactly how that's going to work, but uh, like Saga is they, like we are. It, this is full like Duder antagonist, right? Good territory here where we have two main characters that have like an entire story mode basically unto themselves each um, I think that's very very interesting and also very cool because I like the idea of like like I'm, a, I'm at least assuming you know Alan has written either written this person into existence or at the very least written a real person into this situation oh Thogwall so... I'll yeet myself, and then once you have that sight of grace, you can choose whether we go towards the top of that mountain to fight a fun and exciting boss, or go to the castle. Will the boss on the mountain lock us out of anything? Because I'm assuming the castle's its own self-contained area, right? Let's do the castle. (laughs) Yeah, let's do the castle then. And then next time I'll look up... Uh, so for the castle, you are going to go all the way the fuck back to Erdtree Gazing Hill. God, where is that? Oh, wait, no. Um, You might not have that one. Oh, no, I do. Boss. I do. I do. Because I think we, we like went by it and then, didn't, and then we like ran away. Ah. So that, or, so that, that one, that's the right one? That is the right one. Now this is often where I actually over where I don't have the map filled in. Yeah, where is that map? Where does that map come from? Oh my god, Morty, how did she get there? Oh, I think I found out uh, where it is. And it's uh it's at the end of a road. Shocking, I know. But what they neglect to tell you is uh you can actually kind of see it on your map. Oh the really? Out area in the top right area, or the top left, you'll see kind of like that little bright uh, spot on the map. It's like next to where the road is marked out to be. Oh, okay. And so it shows you how to get to it. If you want, we can. We that can be what we do too. 
Oh, yeah, sure. Also, uh, Michael's going to be dropping by shortly, and he might not be on much of the stream, but he'll be on the last, like, a little chunk of it, I think. Fuck yeah. All right, so I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I was just make, messaging him back there, so... Ooh, is that a, is there a seed over here? No, I must have picked that one up already. Ooh, let me, can I upgrade the, my flask? Because I picked up that seed, but I don't, I don't know if I have enough. No, not yet. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm at the right one, right? I oh, there's your sign. You okay. Be. Yeah. I just didn't see it. I reckon. Shucks. Shucks and chuds. Shugs and chugs. I I said shucks and chuds, but you know. I love that. That's like a. That's almost like a verbal Rorschach test. Kind of is. Also, just you know, my audio might cut out for one second. Oh no! The audio cut out. Just plug it in the other headset so that Michael can actually hear you when he gets here. There we go. but I forgot to open the one that's right next to me that'll actually give me the nice breeze. Smooth it. Smooth. Oh, yeah, you're, like, way up there. Okay. Um, oh, uh, another another little thing, just, like, uh, talking about the, um, just the trailer. Did you notice the Ocean View Hotel sign in the trailer? In the background, you betcha. Well, and what's interesting about that, right, is in Control, it wasn't the Ocean View Hotel, it was the Ocean View Motel. Motel. Right, so what? what's with that difference, right? Like, why Why is that? That's not a huge difference, but why is that small difference even exist at all? Um, that's very curious. Um, oh, crabs. I don't want to have crabs. Oof. And those are some big ass crabs. Oh wow, I killed those, that really. I wow. Okay, I feel like the last time we fought. I guess so. I just I feel like the last yeah the whole, I I just felt like the very last time we fought them that wasn't that long ago. They were kicking my fucking ass. Those ones but, also suck in Lyernia for whatever reason. The ones in Liurnia were the ones that I was. Yeah, yeah. So why yeah, were, why are they so much harder? Yeah, what the fuck? What's what's? I don't understand what the difference is there, or why? Oh, horse guy. Oh god, he's doing that gold shit. Oh, troll, troll right behind you. Oh god, oh god. Oh, I actually staggered him. Nice, we almost got him. Hell yeah. Get down, bitch. Um, and then uh, uh, one detail, too, that was part of the press release about the game um, is that uh, on top of Bright Falls, the dark place, right? Well, which we'll definitely be exploring some of, and uh, but there will be another major place that we get to actually go see, uh, actively spend time in, which is Watery, the neighboring town, which is where Ati went on vacation. Oh, that's true. Oh. 
that's 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 we're going to be going into 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 that town and seeing at least some stuff there. So I, I mean, we're I, yeah, we're going to be. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be real interesting. I am. I'm very excited. I wish it was out already. <laughs> I wish it was out right now. Um, oh, this is an interesting thing. I, I, I don't know if I told you or not, but I feel like I probably did. But supposedly we're getting a Silent Hill update before June, which is the next, like, I mean, that's literally the next, only the next four days. So su supposedly there's going to be a drop. Of, of trailers and well so that makes sense because Konami was supposed to be they were one of the only companies that had signed up to have an E3 show before E3 got cancelled um, so like they were not scheduled to be part of the Sony showcase or Summer Games Fest um, so they, they're they just going to be independently it, it makes sense for them to just independently release their their stuff hi kitty yeah it does make sense that they do it like that but the metal gear uh three remake trailer was that was that's konami and that was part of the sony showcase so i don't know i don't know yeah it's kind of it's hard to tell what direction a company is gonna go when they feel like uh well like because it used to just be like correct me if i'm wrong but it, everyone didn't used to be doing as like, I feel like there's more smaller showcases now. Well, when E3 was, you no, know, there definitely is. When E3 was at its height, though, you had Xbox, Sony, or uh, Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, um, EA, Ubisoft, Konami. I feel like I'm missing one more bigger company. Activisions, I want to say maybe would do it. So, but the, the, all all those bigger game publishers would have their own like shows at E3 on top of the Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo stuff. Um, and now we get like a million little ones. We get we get like way like a ton of small small stuff. Um, so it's definitely become a lot more, for sure. Um, but even even at even at like the height of E three, we still had like you know yeah EA, Konami, Ubisoft. You'd still get you'd still get uh, some independent or, or some of the shows from some of the other that were not the consoles themselves. Um, and actually, like literally, like. The, the cringiest, like, unintentionally, most unintentionally funny E3 show, like, of all time was the last Konami one, actually. Um, it's fucking terrible. It's, but it's so funny. Oh my god, it's so funny. There's two guys on stage at one point, and I swear to god, like, one of them is, like, done with his thing, and then he just goes and stands directly behind the other guy, and you, he, you just see, like, this, like, just unbelievable, like, I don't think he was doing it on purpose, but, like, what looks like just this unbelievable rage coming off of that guy's face standing behind the other dude while he gives his presentation. Um, and it just, it just, it, it's just, I'll have to send you a video. It, it's fucking hilarious. Oh, I, if you want to just defend my stationary character for a second, I believe Michael is here. Huzzah. Yo. Dude, I thought I'd hang out for an hour or two. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> like probably 40 more minutes of this, and then oh, go. after that, I'm just chill. Oh, I'm good. Uh, I got a headset set up for you already. Tim, did you just turn into a cart? No. No? You didn't, you didn't yeah, turn into a cart? Yeah, the cart is where I was. I brought oh. it there. Um, that, that's Tim. The cart is who I am now. No, literally. <laughs> it's a spell you can shapeshift into like random inanimate objects. So like if somebody invades your game and they're like looking for you, you can like turn into something that looks like it would just be there and then surprise the shit out of them. It's actually worked a couple of times where we've, yeah. Uh... Yeah, it, it, is, it has been surprisingly useful. 
Uh, now, can this Tim? Can you hear Michael? Okay. Or did Michael? You can hear Tim. I can hear Tim. I can. I can hear Michael. Okay. Oh, cool. all right. <laughs> well, that's that's what we want. He's a Tim's a pothead. Tim, <laughs> literally. Come and show him, man. I like it. <laughs> I'm clear to spell jar cannon. <laughs> yeah. I I'm the Belmont that can't read. Yeah. You always look like some clown version of. Yeah, well, he's also got the vagina face, too. Oh, yeah. The a little face. vagina mouth like that. Mm. <laughs> oh, here we go. Tim's got, like, a whole another like, character design every single week. Oh, sure. <laughs> That's a cool-looking boss. Model. That's actually, I mean, it's a little different from the other ones, but that's actually a pretty regular-looking enemy for mm. this game. Like, you, you find these... No. It's got... Its skin does have this it's rock texture to it. modification yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. It's made entirely of rock, so if you hit yeah. it with... It's not, like, attacks, regular flesh. It, yeah, like, they'll, like, ding off of it, like the uh, other stone digger enemies. Hmm. Ah! Just screamed at me until I fell down. Ooh! Oh, that's all that got me. Oh my god. Heal yourself. He did like Let a thousand get you. damage in one hit. Yeah. Is its weakness like in its thighs because there's like a glowing white spot? In oh, that's just what I happen to be my targeting reticle. Oh, okay. So like I could move that around. That's just like what body part I happen to be. Helpful for really big enemies. Mm -hmm. The first one was like kind of in his ass. I thought like the G spot was his weakness, you know. <laughs> 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 uh, just like that, the tone of the stream has changed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sweet. Now, we can't take all of this gold. Gold is useless to us. Instead, it's got to be gold mm. runes. So, just put all this gold back in the fucking ground, guys. Good job. Uh, I mean, I could use it. Can you use gold as currency? No, I mean, like, personally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Instead of gold <laughs> runes. Uh, is there like a zip back to the beginning thing for here? We've done everything in this cave, right? Once you've beat the boss, uh, the, the restriction on travel should lift. Alright. Uh, let's see. Like COVID, kind of travel. No, 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 uh, fat just means fast travel. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, sorry, so we're... We're no longer quarantined, so you're just gonna go outside of this and then summon me again. Oh, just, just, just walk outside instead of fast yeah. traveling? Right. This dungeon was kind of like the half. This is kind of a short one. For like, uh, yeah, it was it was short, and it provides you with another waypoint because uh, we're in the Valley of Trolls now, son. Do you have to pay some sort of toll? <laughs> You're right. Gotta pay the troll toll. It's for the boy's soul. <laughs> the boy's soul <laughs> is mine. <laughs> Uh, season 16, starting uh, June 7th. Oh, hell yeah. Dude. We're, we're right on the cusp of... Uh, have you seen the trailer for that yet? I don't think so. Uh, just, like, right off the bat, it already has jokes in it that I'm like, God damn, you guys are already doing shit. That I'm like, how... It's just, like, jokes that, like, you almost can't believe haven't been done before because really? they fit so well into the, into the show. Awesome. Well, I loved when they came back uh, with the last season... And they had to explain what they were doing away the whole time, so they just explained how they caused, um, you know, like every major thing fucking, that happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they fucked up the ballots yeah. in the election. Um, they made the Rudy costumes Giuliani. for January six, uh, and they made the hair dye for Rudy, <laughs> Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> yeah, that was fucking hilarious. Just the, yeah, just the sh ridiculousness of the uh, the idea that oh they were all they were all involved in yeah, like these major events across like the Forrest Gump of <laughs> yeah. because you're not Forrest Gump. <laughs> yeah, right. right, only Forrest Gump can pull that shit off. Oh, what's what what are you giving a do view? Are you doing a review on the new do? That's Spark. We've already Spark. Have we done that? 
What's, well, what I is Spark? Know. I don't know about it. it Tell is. me about Spark. What, what's your expertise opinion it's on it? It's a pink lemonade Mountain yes, Dew. Yes, it is pink lemonade. Oh, that doesn't sound it's, so bad. It's, it's one of the better ones. Okay. That, doesn't, they, yeah, that they, sounds they, at they least taller. It heartburn almost instantly every really? time I drink it, but it is really good. It is good. And the, there was a... There's Living a, gives me heartburn. Really? Yeah, just being alive. Oh, everything. I think nothing gives you. I was like, what? No, 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 no. Just, 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 no, just sheer existence. I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. At least. <laughs> oh, I had it when I was really bad. Even when I was like a little kid. Oh, like, right. I, yeah, I should straight up like called like acid reflux disease that for, I got. I, I definitely yeah. have that too. But I think for me, it was an accumulation Good. in my life of yes, definitely of just eating literally junk my my like entire existence up until I was like. 20 or something i started to introduce like maybe some vegetables to my diet or something that was that your first time are we gonna have to do vegetable reviews <laughs> no, on no, our channel no, too but um i just i just mean like i got to live pretty good in a sense because i just, I just did literally whatever the fuck i wanted Fucking forever. Cocaine. well i didn't quite get that far but but you know last few years yeah finally started catching up with me i think is yeah. what happened but um, they do have, like, a brand new Mountain Dew flavor just, like, in the last month or so. You're never going to stop having those, though. No, no. Called uh, Summer Freeze. And that one's pretty good because it's basically... Is it? Okay. It's basically bomb pop popsicle flavor. Oh, God damn it. It's the fucking swamp now, aren't we? Isn't it? Um, uh, kind so of, yeah. I like that one. <laughs> uh, and so I said to say the, what the flavor is it, it, actually It's basically be bomb pop popsicle Oh, flavor. okay, okay. So it tastes like, you know, an icy, a more watery, like, kind of icy or something like that. All right, all right. That doesn't sound horrible. No, it's, that's one of the better ones, too. I, I see. I really like like them making, like, the really bad ones, though, because then I, I get to watch your face when you try I it. I still can't believe they made a fucking fruitcake flavor. <laughs> that, that is the worst. That, that's got to be the worst. Like, I can't even imagine. At least conceptually, it's like, who the fuck wants to drink fruitcake? Well, I, who wants to eat fruitcake? <laughs> I know, but then it's already the Cheetos one. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I couldn't eat. Egregious. Did we? I, I, we no, did, no, well, we I think, Tim, you, you've had it, and I think you told us about it. Yeah, like, it, that, that's another instant heartburn one that's like, uh, it's, if, yeah. if you liked the, like, like, you know, like the spicy Mexican fruit taffy. See, actually, I do kind of like yeah, that. Yeah, I like that. So, I mean, so I don't know, that, maybe. But might carbonated. Get me heartburn, but... <laughs> carbonated? Oh, okay. I, like I said, being alive gives me heartburn, yeah, so heartburn. there's no point in trying to eat things that don't give me heartburn, because I'll just have it anyway. Right. Yeah. I guess that means, in a way, I'm unrestricted, though. Yeah. I'll, I'll get it, no matter what. So... <laughs> Like, I'll get the same amount of heartburn from pizza as I would carrots, so. Yeah, I've noticed I have triggers, which is, you know, the foods you would expect it to be greasy. Oh, yeah. Like when you've got whatever Italian items are food. in this pit. Uh, I think I got it all already. Unless I'm not, unless I'm not seeing. I think hidden over here. All right. Well, no, I got it go. all. Yeah. Oh, shit. Well, an enemy dropped something, but that's not the same thing. Alright. I don't know why, but just fucking bread. Literally. Bread. Carbs. Hurt me. Just, I don't know, bread, I don't bread. know if it's something about just, the grain. Like fucking bread or, fucking hurts me. <laughs> or the, the gluten. I don't know. But, oh, I'm uh, dead. I feel like this became like a grumpy old man kind of. Uh, <laughs> we were actually just food. having a conversation a few minutes ago about. Uh, about how old we feel. I know. Well, here, here's uh, here's something for you, Michael. Probably one of the only streams on Twitch where. Oh, I don't know. Let's talk about fucking how fucking old they. Feel. Maybe I don't know. I feel like that's not too uncommon, honestly. Here, here's something that should make you feel old, though. Yeah. Pokemon cards have now been are now old enough that they have been on Antique Roadshow. Oh, really? That, yeah. That's kind of cool. But uh, it it also should make you feel fucking old. I, for some reason, it doesn't phase me. Really, um, the Pokemon cards? Because that was—I mean—that was like, you know, like hot. That well, was just not I, an old thing. I already had kids. that. I don't know. I already like kind of had that revelation. Like, I feel like recently, or like a few months ago, or something. I was just thinking about fucking like those old Pokemon fucking commercials fucking for like the the Game Boy games or something. 
Oh yeah, Game Boy is fucking old. <laughs> that, that that was the early '90s. Those commercials. Oh, what? This know. enemy heals himself, or is this a player? That's that's uh, that's an alchemist. Oh, so they have the fucking healing. They have the crimson musketeers. Fucking... Yeah. There we go. Hey, you little bitch. Damn your alchemy. <laughs> <laughs> Damn your necromancy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, just remembering that, that those were the early 90s, the commercials, like, introducing people to the idea of Pokemon, you know. Well, Pokemon started, I mean, I guess the, kind of, I guess like the commercials the, the might not have started, games, but the, you know. yeah, but, but even then, uh, that was still even, like, you know, what, 86, 87, like, the original one actually came out. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm just talking about, like, the ones I saw as a kid sure, sure, in sure. America, you know. Like, but I guess that um, that should make you feel even older if the if if, you, if even by the time you were seeing it then as a little kid it was already like a solid like six or seven years old. Right. Right. Well, yeah, in Japan, I mean, I guess yeah. If you go back to its. Well, I think Genesis, I think it had a North Japan. American release right it's around the same time. Or... Yeah. Oh god. Yeah. What is the? Yeah, I guess I didn't it's, remember it's it being opposite side of the ramparts. You just, oh god. Okay. Just follow them along. Tim, would you would you mind doing just a quick Google search since you're waiting for me to summon you anyway? What year did the first Pokemon video game ever come out? I guess if it's late eighties, like that is older than I realized. I thought Pokemon was a nineties thing. I'm I nineteen ninety six. Nope, you were right. You were right. Alright. Yeah, because that's Pokemon around green and red. Yeah. Those were the first ones? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought I remembered it being fucking like Yellow and red and blue and shit. Green. <laughs> it's it's Pokemon red and green, and then yellow was a was a like special edition variation. Because yeah, that, like, like they're all, I had for, on the Game Boy. Yeah, color yeah. Color so color it's color. yeah, yellow was like a special. So yellow was the first one too, but yeah, it was like a limited was edition. Was released outside of Japan. Oh, oh so it was it was red Japan, and blue here. It was Pocket Monsters red and green. Oh, outside okay. it was Pokemon red and blue. See, yeah, there you go. All right. yeah, our memories are both correct. And I really, yeah, I did think it was, uh, yeah, I really did think it was, uh, I, I always remembered as a kid, like, really in my mind, it. thinking of things in terms of red and blue everywhere because of fucking popsicles. Star, because of fucking, yeah, popsicles, fucking Star Wars. Popsicles, blue, lightsabers. Lightsabers, red lightsabers, and fucking, yeah, the kids would either have a Blastoise blue cartridge. Right. Or a Charizard red cartridge, or and I had the Pikachu yellow one. Right. Um, and all oh, these little bitches. I fucking yeah. hate these guys. So yeah, once I had that memory, like a few months ago or something, about like Pokemon being fucking. You know, Make sure not to roll through the poison because it does cover you, and then you're covered in the stuff that poisons you. Oh, that's great. That's a nice little detail they added to the swamps for realism. Fuck them. <laughs> Don't worry, you can pull out your soap and wash it off. I fucking kid you not. That's actually that's a, that's a, that's some Metal Gear Solid Three <laughs> shit. Do you remember you remember how in Metal Gear Solid Three you had to like suture your wounds oh, closed and like fucking feet actually like eat shit and stuff to like keep your stamina up? Like that was <laughs> like that game straight up has like survival sim like right. mechanics to it. Yeah, that, that is some weird. that is some Metal Gear Solid three shit. And they're remaking that, right? Yes, Solid specifically Delta. the third one. Yeah, it's, so it's yeah, so it's called Metal Gear Solid Delta, mm. uh, which uh, Delta in the Greek alphabet meaning to change without changing the structure of something. Oh, so that's cool. so that's kind of their idea of like this is you know we're gonna keep the the the, the heart of this the same, mm -hmm. the basic structure of this the same, mm -hmm. but obviously also we're updating it. We are making some changes, but right. uh, um, <laughs> yeah. Well, so the they released it just as like a cinematic kind of pre-rendered trailer. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not like gameplay or in-game footage, right. but then they did uh, also release some screenshots online of of actual in-game like. And man, yeah. it looks fucking beautiful. I'm so mm. I'm so excited. Yeah. They've also confirmed, like at least for the American or uh, English release, um, American version or whatever, that it will be the entire original cast um, right. will be the same. Mm. Um, I don't know. I think some of the Japanese voice actors for the for the Japanese version. I don't. I think some of them might have died, so I don't think they can be the same mm. for that version. Mm -hmm. Unless they're literally planning on just cleaning up the audio files and literally using the same like recorded lines. Yeah. But I, I 
I, I think they're going to have all the actors come and re- like record their dialogue again. Oh. As, you know. Right, right. Uh, oh. But yeah, it's interesting to see him start with three. I mean, I, I'm okay with it because oh. I think three is probably the best one. Yeah. I think it's my favorite out of all of them. And then also, chronologically, it's the first game. Right. So it works as a... But also, you know if that if, if it's going to be... Um, you know that if it is successful, I'm sure they will go on to do, you know, at least one and two, oh, for sure. I, I would like to see four get the same treatment, even though that one hasn't aged nearly as much. Right. And the reason I say that, too, is because four... So four is stuck on the PS3, mm-hmm. right? It's the only... The only way you can play Metal Gear Solid 4 is only on the oh, PS3. Only. <laughs> you can't play it on the PS4, the PS5, any form of Xbox or Nintendo system. You can't even emulate it on the PC. <laughs> because cause the, you know, that's, that was the whole thing <laughs> with the PlayStation 3 was it had this real weird internal hardware, right? <laughs> and Metal Gear Solid 4, like, it was built on that weird architecture. <laughs> and so many of its systems rely on the just bizarre way the PS3 was made for it to run. Huh. So I honestly think... Getting a remake at some point sure. might be the only yeah. way that game's even playable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. like I think it might be the only way you can even do it. Yeah, I mean that's it's definitely worth doing it to four. Yeah. Um. Oh man. Okay, that was just instant death. All right. Oh, they got him too. Um, oh damn. But yeah, I'm I'm really I'm really excited about it. I, I it's supposed to be coming out next year. Um, I mean, who knows? You know, game development something that there's often delays with mm. shit. But uh, it's yeah, real real promising. I mean, Konami after 15 years of basically not making anything, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, I guess the last Metal Gear that the Phantom Pain was only eight years ago, but that was also like. Konami at their worst as a company, <laughs> and that like that whole public like spat between Kojima and Konami. Right then, yeah. uh, that'll happen right then too. So like, it wasn't exactly Konami at their best. I mean, and then aside from that, I mean, like the last good Silent Hill game was two thousand four. <laughs> uh, there hasn't been a Castlevania game in well over twelve years, at mm-hmm. least. Um, so it's like they finally are getting getting back in the things and, like, making shit again. Um, yeah. oh, I mean, all those new Silent Hill games coming up. Supposedly awesome. we're getting an update in the next four days. Mm. Uh, like a big leaker that, like, leaked the, the game's existence before the official announcement to begin with. Mm. Has, like, straight up said, I've seen the trailers, I promised I wouldn't say anything about them, mm. uh, but they will be releasing before June, which okay. is... June first is Thursday, so oh, yeah. so we're get, we're get, well. I, I was just saying this to Tim before, but it, it makes sense for that to be just kind of randomly dropped because Konami E yeah. three is canceled this year. E3, oh. They're just they're just literally wasn't enough people. But Konami was one of the few companies that did sign up to actually have a showcase at E three. Mm-hmm. So since they can't, since E three is just not going to be a thing, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. they'll be just kind of doing a random mm-hmm. drop of their own stuff. Um, now those bad like Sonic game presentations happened at E3, right? Uh, I, there's only ever been the one, oh, okay. um, and okay. it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> right. uh, but it was specifically, um, it was specifically like the Sonic 20th anniversary, and mm-hmm. I actually think that was at Comic Con. Comic Con. Yeah, but again, it was it was the Which it was the Sonic no people doing their pretty much uh, prominent at all. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like it only because of, like, the pandemic mm. did that really fall. Like, E3 had been falling apart kind of for years pre any of that going on. Mm. Like, so Nintendo had, like, really been at E3 in, I mean, since, like, 2014, I think, Nintendo hadn't had a show. And then Sony stopped going... The last Sony show at E3 was like 2016. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, so like the, so E3 was kind of falling apart anyway. I think Comic Con, I think probably this year, or may, maybe even not, maybe not till next year, but I think Comic Con will kind of just bounce right back, honestly. I hope so. I think Does, E3 was ever, dying anyway. Ever since, like, I mean, after uh, fucking Disney bought Marvel, then like a lot of the Marvel projects kind of. Well, they started. Disney Expo Ye- yeah, the D23. 
yeah. thing. That that's a, that's definitely the case. But they sometimes go to Comic Con. I don't know. But then Comic Con also has like also has video game stuff. Right, and right, also no, like there's no, also no, a bunch of other stuff too. And then so, DC uh, had that stupid fandom shit. Uh, DC uh, fandom. Years, We're gonna put all no, our fans in a dome and They've suffocate. Got a <laughs> They've got holy <laughs> magic. Their name is Vigor, so I'm guessing they have a lot of health. Oh shit! I didn't even notice the invasion message. Uh, all right, so we got another. I'm we got gonna... a player invading us here. I don't even have my souls back yet. Okay, yeah, you pretend to be that flagpole, <laughs> and then I'll just I'll draw him over you're, here, and then you backstab him. You're, you're like a wonder twin, Tim. You just turn into like four of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh damn. damn! That didn't fool that much. No, fucker. he knew exactly what was going on. <laughs> you imagine that happened to the Wonder Twins. One of them just turns into that bucket, and then Switch just comes right over and like, takes his shit. I was just gonna say, like, is this in it? They piss in the bucket. Yeah. <laughs> or they just come over and start throwing up in it right <laughs> There's not even a, <laughs> an intentional thing. Yeah. <laughs> they just start puking in it. Alright, I managed to get him to back off. Oh. Why could one of the I can't believe I, I wasted only do all that. Turn into a bucket. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was specifically like it was like one could turn into any animal and the other could turn into any form of water. So it wasn't just like a bucket. It was like they could be like a cyclone or a tsunami. But it was, you know, that is still a lot more limited than like anything. Yeah. One of them could do anything, and one of them could do any kind of water. You think like one should? Have <laughs> God been, damn it! You think one should be able to yeah, turn yeah. into any? Water uh, into any sort of animal, and the other should be able to turn into any sort of uh, inanimate object. But, sure, yeah, yeah, that would that know. would have made more sense. No, it, by that logic, actually, what Tim's able to do is more impressive than the Wonder yeah. Twins. Yeah, that's cool. yeah. No, the, the Wonder Twins. That's half of them suck out. Yeah, half the Wonder Twins <laughs> suck. <laughs> you know, um, and they had that cat or whatever the fuck it was. They have a dog or a cat. I don't remember. They had, like, uh, some right sidekicks that were unique to this. Oh, they had a friends. monkey, I think. They had a yeah, monkey. Batman had, like, a monkey. No, the Wonder Twins had... I don't think Batman's ever had a monkey, to uh, my knowledge. Well, the Wonder Twins did. were in the Super Friends, yeah, and they had well, Batman monkey. took care of the monkey sometimes. <laughs> he probably had... Either. No, I've seen episodes oh, okay. of that. Well, I, yeah. I, I, me and, me and uh, Ulysses, Ulysses watched it. some episodes of that 60s Super Friends Where cartoon. Where Darkseid's got a boner for Wonder Woman Dude, Darkseid's a straight-up incel in that yeah, show. Right, he literally right. he doesn't care about anything except for, like, marrying Wonder Woman. That's right. all he cares about. <laughs> oh... Uh, but then, but then that show, I swear to God, also made Batman the dumbest one out of all of them. I remember you guys saying that. Like I, like I swear to God, there, like there would be like a, a whole plot where everybody was like figuring out, figuring something out together, and like they're all putting pieces together. And then after all the characters have basically explained what's going on to the audience, like a minute or two into the following conversation, Batman will start like saying what they all just said, <laughs> right. and like putting it. Credit to, for yeah, it. And, like, well, well, not even even that it's like he really is like just figuring just it out now, yeah. <laughs> it's He's fucking the weird slowest detective in the world it really was he dude he was he really <laughs> felt like it it's like right, i'm sorry aquaman said that five minutes ago <laughs> oh you're gonna flick people now yeah you're gonna flick the bean it's literally just a giant finger oh cool and you just <laughs> flick people with it that's kind of that's kind of unique at least. Oh, there's a I lot like, of weird like shit. That, so. um, like there's no like all the Dark Souls games have like crazy spider monsters and stuff in them. Mm -hmm. This game does not. However, it does have uh, the like the severed hands of giants that have been mm -hmm. reanimated into these like spider-like monsters, <laughs> uh, and that's that's also super that's kind cool. of out there and weird. Yeah. Um, also, like, the gods of this universe are just, like, this, like, thing that's, like, two fingers that, like, kind of fingers you. And... All right. <laughs> oh, it's just one of the cosmic gods. One of the cosmic one of the gods. Cosmic gods. It's just, like, fingers, yeah, I'm going to present you. myself Finger. to humanity. Yeah. You finger humanity. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, it's like it's like a weird eldritch thing that like is like to, like when coming into the corporeal world is like i trying to take a form that humans recognize and so it's like well f i guess humans would recognize fingers but like well, it, it's literally just like because there's no not even like a rest of a hand it's just like the flesh connecting like two fingers oh okay. also huh. we keep it's hearing like about a god. the greater will but the greater will 
um, talks through the two fingers, and the two fingers talk through finger readers. And it's like, I feel like we're getting a lot of telephone game when it comes uh, to this. And lives. the finger readers <laughs> talk through fingering. And, yeah. right. Well, and then also, like, to activate the multiplayer, you use this uh, little item down here that's called a furl calling finger remedy. And so it's like you're, you basically do, like, a weird ET thing, and then, like, summon, or, like, makes it so that you can summon players into your world. Huh. Is there like a thematic significance to it being finger? Really it might just be weird. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I guess it's. It all comes from this god. I think is where like the origin of that of all the other finger stuff in the game is. And then and then everything yeah. else is like a product of that. And then the symbolism of everything. There's like the um the bloody fingers, which take pride in killing the emissaries of the two fingers. So that's how huh. you, that you use that item, and that's how you invade someone else's game. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, I thought if George R. R. Martin had come up with the architecture of this world or whatever, that that would... He would I don't make know how much it kind of sense, make some kind of sense. Well, it definitely, it, it, it all links together in some way. I don't know how much is his, because basically he can't, like, like, the CGI, like, narration about the war of the gods and how the world was just basically, like, ruined. Like, that's what George R. R. Martin wrote, and then a, a, most of the finer and smaller details are still, like, the same theme that does, like, all the other Souls So he game basically stuff. Um, wrote everything that... God damn it. You know what? I might be done with Jarhead for the night. Oh no. What happened to Jarhead? I'm facing consequences. (laughs) You're you're dying more than me. That's usually never the case in these games. Yeah. But he wrote everything, basically everything that happened before the events of the game. Like the shattering he wrote, the characters, Merica, her demigod children, Radagon Mm. as her dual personality, um just all sorts of things like uh i, I like how it's the it's, structure of everything it's like it's an inverse of like lord of the rings too mm-hmm. so like you know in a way because the like what has turned because like all the all of the dark souls games are like a fantasy post-apocalypse stories mm-hmm. right they're all in completely ruined worlds where like there's no proper civilization really anymore mm-hmm. and the same is true of elden ring and basically the, the 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 thing that it's like the war of these demigods and in it literally the shattering of the Elden Ring. So the, the the Elden Ring being like destroyed is what casts the world into ruin. Whereas like the Lord of the Rings is like the altruistic like goal of saving the world is destroying the ring. I thought that was kind of a cool. I feel like that right. must have been part of the thought process. Is like what if right. destroying the ring actually like just completely fucked the entire world over? Right. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. And that is like uh, kind of like what because when Merica shattered the Elden Ring, she, you can see that she was trying to undo the hold of the Golden Order, and she was trying to stop the, uh, effectively go against the Greater Will, the God that had essentially the, the the Greater Will. I guess is a level above God. It's like a huh. cosmic entity, and uh-huh. it had turned her it's into like a God in exchange for right. being her vassal, her God. Like, mm. she was the god of that, that cosmic force. Uh-huh. Um, and that's all about order and totality and stuff. So you get rid of all of the uh, the lesser races. You, you, well, first you got to pick a race. They, uh, they picked humans. Mm. And the Newmans. Poor choice. <laughs> but yeah, they, they... So he wrote some pretty interesting lore. But the, the the thing I'm most frustrated with in these games is their inability to just tell ah, a fuck. fucking story straightforward. Well, Sekiro is like the one unique one in that respect, right? Like that actually tells like an actively straight kind of story with like cutscenes and like character arcs and stuff. Right. That was like a more grounded setting, wasn't it? Uh, no, it was still fantasy. Yeah, so, well, I mean, like Sekiro, Sacri- like it was kind of. Japan, sort of, but like a mystic. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Whereas this seems very high concept, high fantasy. Yeah. Well, I mean, you still are fighting like dragons and stuff in Sekiro, yeah. I mean, there's less crazy monsters overall. Right. 
like there, there is like a there there's definitely like only a, like a handful of like you know bosses that are like big crazy things like that dragon mm. or uh there's a crazy like fighter demon you fight at one point a lot more of the enemies are humans oh. or like you human in some way um but but there's definitely still like yeah mm. more, more grounded but not completely no oh. Alright, this is a perfume bottle. Cool. <laughs> this is really cool. <laughs> you just, just find a perfume bottle. It's, it's, it's part of it. You use you it for like crafting stuff, so you could like make like oh. potions and stuff with them. Right. You make uh, this thing with it. You just, uh, like a explosive mist. Just standing in the poison swamp, Tim. Yeah, because I accidentally did an emote. Oh. Just... <laughs> now that is a crazy electrically colored character you have there, Tim. Oh yeah. Uh, I guess I could put on here. my better armor. Yeah. Uh, he looks like Jesus uh, right the now. The armor that I did for Nadia. <laughs> oh yeah. Crazy mask. Uh, like a lion. Almost a... And then you're just like super rotund armor. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, it's this guy. Who's that guy? Oh, that guy. <laughs> so that's like one of the arm of a god things. Don't uh, you? I don't actually. What are these? I'm sure Tim has explained it to me before. But what are, what are those enemies specifically that always throw the cool Those shit? ones, the grafted. Those um. So, grafting is seen as kind of like this forbidden art, but uh, that mm -hmm. only the weak use to kind of make themselves stronger. Mm -hmm. Godric the grafted, um, as you can tell by his surname, that he he did not take that to heart, mm -hmm. um, and he used a lot of it, and mm -hmm. so. Whenever you see one of those little grafted enemies, you can see that somebody that that they are either used to besiege another kingdom that that's like one of Godric's forces that he sent, um, or it's somebody that was allied with Godric. Uh, here, you can see a lot of his forces. You see the fuckers with the bells. You see the fuckers with the the, the many arms and shit. Mm. Um, and you see some of his knights stationed around here, but you don't see any of, like, you don't see Godric, you don't, this is, like, fucking way far away from any place you would have seen him. So, right. this is, uh, some place he occupied during the Shattering. Oh, okay. Uh, and this, you can just kind of see, like, the campaign of, like, like as you're exploring you see the influence of various demigods as they went on this campaign to not just win but to wipe out the other demigods and all of their forces mm. basically anybody who didn't back their claim to the golden throne or the fucking elden throne whatever mm. where the shit did you there you are i didn't go anywhere uh i just stopped oh there you are okay You think your cave would have caught on fire, doesn't it? You would think so. <laughs> What's this? That. Oh, it's just one of those little. Oh, it's a ghost. <laughs> Looks kind of like it's doing a face down, ass up thing. Nice. 
Now I know play. Elden Ring was super popular when it came out. Like but, shockingly, right. actually, like like these the Souls franchise had been pretty like I mean like you know not. Like, it wasn't popular at all, but, like, right. I mean, Elden Ring was, like, tenfold, right. like, higher sales numbers than anything else that From Software has ever done. Right. But how has its, like, I guess, I don't know, popularity endeared now, like, up to this point? Like, like it's long form, kind of. Yeah, like, is it something... I think it's maintained pretty damn well. I mean, so there's a huge uh, expansion supposed to be coming out, like, spring of next year. So that's, like, oh. two years out from its initial release that it's right. getting, like, major content expansions. Yeah, and, like, I don't know. I remember, like, on the PS3, you know, some games and their online modes, you know, people... Like, nobody would be playing their online mode after, like, say, six months. Yeah, to oh, at most. definitely yeah. not the case with this, because we get sold. invaded by other players all the time. Right. Oh, and yeah. that even even that was even true of all of the games, because we've only been playing these over the course of the last, like, I guess two years now. Mm -hmm. um, and every, like, going back to Dark Souls 1, like, we were getting invaded all the time. Mm -hmm. like playing the oldest game out of all of them like it was still like crazy how often we were getting invaded by other players right. and that was the less popular like you know less well known kind of more niche games hmm. so I think I mean I guess I don't I haven't looked at like the exact like player counts and stuff but mm. I would be shocked if it wasn't pretty high Elden still Ring, I believe within a year exceeded 20 million copies sold Wow. Which that's a lot for games like yeah. one of the best selling if not the best selling game the year it came out wow. well like I mean the new Street Fighter comes out on uh, June 2nd and that's like that's a big staple video game that's, franchise right. and like Capcom is saying like well you know we hope it might make, sell 10 million copies like that mm. for them is like a hopeful goal right. and, and, and Elden Ring sold 20 million huh. as a developer who typically had not been like the big you know kinds of sales in the past i guess that example just answered another question i was going to have like i was going to ask like do video are there and i mean of course there are now that i'm thinking about it more but like are there video games that like really anymore have a you know sort of cultural impact where it's like oh, I think it's so, still sure. talked about years you know, later five yeah and i i think stuff. i think uh this Street one is definitely one of those games. yeah yeah i mean there's I, I think elden ring's definitely one of those um it's you know it's funny i don't know if i'd say like i like dark souls is but i would say almost more like the souls formula like right, the from right. software souls series there have been as a whole a lot of games that have utilized the formula that the from soft games have produced and i think I mean, Elden ring is a perfect distillation hmm. thus far of the various successes and pitfalls i hmm. think it, there, there's a couple things that it misses the mark on Oh, sure. Like, uh, like you don't you don't get the weapon versatility that you had with Bloodborne, though you do get something close with like the weapon arts, where a katana is a katana, but it also does this. Or if you mm, have a different probably. katana, it does this. Ah, that's cool. All right. So each we weapon identity is there, but you also have like some of the difficulty just isn't there. This is oh sure by far and away one of the easiest Souls games, right. which makes a lot of people kind of go, okay, well. How much of a Souls game can it be if it's mm. easy? Easy, right? That's a good point. And we got invaded by the same fucker. Oh god! So just get on this elevator. Hopefully he's down here. God, if he's at the top of this thing, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> All right, now because we're oh hey, it's we, a boss. We are at a safe spot. He can't get to us because of that the, the elevator and stuff. So <laughs> before we do that, um, I'll do this and give you a little exposition. So this is the Shaded Castle. Okay. The Shaded Castle is also known as the Eclipse Throne. <laughs> now, who do we know that's had eclipses referenced several times? You mean uh, in Elden Ring or in pop culture? In Elden Ring. Oh, okay. Uh, so I was gonna say Mikola. Eclipse. So.
uh, oh. Mikula, the unalloyed, the golden, the uh, the fucking of the Halig tree of the yeah. scene, uh, Saint Trina. He's got a billion different fucking titles. He's right. also the focus of the DLC. He's the oh. only character depicted on the, the advertisement for that DLC or the announcement. Um, not only that, but you saw those uh, those knights that we were fighting, the ones with the scythes and the, the, yeah. all the gold and red. Those the are Melania's um, oh. knights. Oh. The, the rotten one. That's she's why, or like, and her presence is why we saw all of those like vine covered statues. Her hmm. presence can make like uh, like stuff start decaying and dying, and it turns foliage this kind of golden red color. So it shows you at one point Melania was here. She was at the Eclipse Throne. You find a statue later on that talks about how um, Mikola came here to perform a ritual to cleanse those who live in death. Mm. Why would Mikola do that? Well, the, the, per, the chief person, those who live in death, would be Godwin the Golden, the first demigod to die, but not actually truly die because only his spirit died. And <clears throat> Mikola went here to perform a ritual during a full eclipse he became to let Ultra. his brother actually die. <laughs> oh, and that is not something that's really portrayed unless you talk to all the ghosts and you read a couple mm -hmm. item descriptions and you find a statue and you find like you compare item names and shit like that. It's mm -hmm. it's really frustrating that they would lock <laughs> cool lore behind that. But the mm -hmm. the message we or the, the the image we're depicted of of Mikola through his actions is one of like the only benevolent gods. Oh, like mm. we don't know of any other god. Oh shit, Jesus to, Christ. Like, stop Ooh. Godwin from just living in perpetual decay. Hmm. That's a cool fucking sword. Yeah. Cool. Oh god. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> well, it is just about that time. Yeah, I don't want to start with this boss fight next time. Yeah, I think that might be the best shot because I think we're like a a three or five minute run away from him. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll just start the next time uh, by doing that. All right. Well, there we go. Awesome. Hmm. Well, it was good being here and talking to you Zen for like ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it was like a solid forty, I'd say. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe only half hour, but it was it was not bad, not bad. I don't really see anybody on right now that I want to raid, so we're just gonna end. All right. All right. We'll have a good night, and we'll be back next week. Tim, or else. Thank you for being here. Or else. Have a good night, or else.